Hello everyone. So I'm out in my terrace at night to capture the full moon, which is also known as Wolf Moon. As you know that every year we get typically 12 uh, full moons, right? One for every month. But in 2023, we are going to get 13 full moons. And uh, uh, in the month of August, I think we are going to experience two full moons. Now, as I have shared in one of my previous videos with photography tips for sunrise, you should always uh, use tripod to capture such landscape moments. And uh, same for moon photography as well. But the practical problem is that the moon is right there on top of it and tripod, the elevation is here, right? So I won't be able to get that angle uh, to get the shot from my terrace. The only option for me to is to just get into a ground and from that, uh, you know, uh, open sky, I can actually get the clear visibility, uh, which at the end of the day, I'm pretty reluctant to do. I've got pretty stable hand, so I'm going to now uh, go for it. Uh, this is you know one shot I got. As you can see, uh, pretty much even you know when I put into it, pretty much the craters are visible here. With the it has come into great detailing. And here you go. Isn't it beautiful? So uh, they say that the you know people who love moons, uh, you know. They are called a selenophile. So if that's the case, then I am one. Tonight's full moon is considered a micro moon because NASA said that it should appear slightly smaller than the regular full moon and the moon will be at nearly its farthest point from the Earth in orbit at about 252,145 miles away. Nevertheless, the moon is still supposed to appear very bright. I think they just used it to differentiate with super moon because the moon is not looking micro from any angle. Micro moon actually indicates that moon is at its farthest from the Earth or in astronomical terms at apogee. Since the moon orbits Earth in an elliptical path, one side is nearer and another side is farther and hence distance affects the moon's size and brightness. In the old farmer's almanac, it is mentioned that during January, wolves howled as a herd outside of the village and different North American tribes adopted the myth differently. We know now that howling and other wolf vocalizations are typically used to define territory, locate pack members, coordinate hunting and reinforce social bonds. Also, they often indulge in howling in chorus to warn rival members about own pack sizes. The acoustic energy distribution is louder and far-reaching if they make the sound looking upward, thereby giving an impression that they are howling at the moon. Research suggests that each subspecies establishes their own howl patterns and shapes due to random mutations and genetic drift. I have written a well-researched article on this in my website and if you are interested you can go through it and the link is provided in the description box below. This myth came into picture because many ancient civilizations, many Native American legends, reinforced the intrigue of wolves howling especially at full moon night. The almost mournful rallying cry haunted and stroked their imagination, so much so that they started calling the first full moon of the year as wolf moon or hunger moon because they thought that wolves howled more at this time due to the paucity of food during the cold winter. It's a very common stock photography in web to see a wolf howling with a full luminescent moon in the background with surreal effect. 
But the Haida tribe in Alaska, for example, calls it the beard hunting moon, while some other tribe members used to call it as black beer moon. Most material that can be found about beer moons is in Native American lore. Basically, a beer moon indicated the time of the year when mother beer gave most birth to cubs. There are many other fascinating names for this January full moon. This entire imagery of wolves holding their faces upward towards sky is similar to how dog howls at times in a high-pitched prolonged note to announce their presence in the territory as well as to communicate with other dogs. We can easily distinguish this from the bark of a dog, which is typically a short and a loud sound. Barking is more common in a dog because howling has lost much of its significance for a dog staying indoor and eating at periodic intervals without worrying about where the next meal will come from and how to eliminate competition for such basic resources. One thing is for sure, human imagination has been caught by no other celestial phenomena as much as the simple sight of Earth's moon in the sky. And scientists notice that many animals in fact exhibit minimal to significant difference in behavior and activity along with the lunar cycle. Moon's gravitational force fill tugs on Earth to create tides and shapes reproduction cycle of not only coastal creatures, but along with it impacts the foraging, communication, reproduction, and other aspects of larger animal world. Based on some of those research papers I studied, I realized that it can be interpreted that during full moon, nocturnal animals like wolves face more predation risk and less prey availability due to the increased illumination, and that message needs to be communicated which impacts their typical howling pattern. And that's why ancient tribes thought that the wolves are actually howling at the moon.